Accelerate Church television program. We are so glad that you could tune in with us today. Pastor Jeremy is teaching on building a strong foundation, such an imperative message for us as Christians as we build our life on the Word of God. We're heading into the sanctuary now with Pastor Jeremy File. A righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity. Ezekiel said all his righteousness will be forgotten. If you take that through the cross of Jesus, you meet, you meet Jesus and you say, wow, you cried tears. What a wonderful name it is. Wow, what a saving that you would deliver me, saving grace you've given me, forgiven me of so much sin. What mercy I've found. But then if you start despising that, you let that slip. You go back to the world. You take that same verse through the cross of Jesus. Jesus doesn't say, welcome to my heaven, rebel. You might have once been a rebel. But you've got to have a turning point. I don't know about you, but I reached a turning point in my life. I reached it. I reference it a lot. If you've been here more than once, you've heard it over and over. You get tired of it, I understand. But 2006, I reached a turning point. I reached a turning point listening to a simple radio, audio drama called Affabel. It was interesting because there were people that worked in church in this. And this is an audio drama. I played it on the radio even. As I listened to it, I related to a man that served in church because I've served in church a lot longer than I pastored. And you know what I found out? That man went to hell. And it struck me. It just cut me. For some reason, listening to that, it just cut me. See, we all have a story. I remember Josh, he was watching Jesse Duplantis talking about his vision of heaven. It just cut him. I, I don't know. God has these appointments in people's lives. You never know what it's going to be. Because see, other people could watch that vision of heaven and never be like, oh, that's just baloney. That's, that's just that man's vision. So other people have heard the audio drama and like, oh, that's it? For whatever reason, I was in that moment. And it cut me. I said, I've been in church. I'm a preacher's kid. I know the word. But I'm not serious about my relationship with God. I reached a turning point. That's why I'm walking in God's call in my life. But guess what? I'm not the one that lined up my body and framed myself and made my own call. My mom didn't call me to this. My mom and dad trained me in the way I should go. That's what every Christian's supposed to do. But you don't determine the call on your own child. Someone had asked me that, you know, are one of your boys eventually going to take the church? I said, you know, I don't even know that either one of them are called to. Oh, excuse me, all, any of the three. I don't even know that my, my girls will marry someone that's called to. I have no idea. Not at this point. When the Lord wants to reveal that, he'll reveal that. Thankfully, i got a few years between now and then. Yeah. But here's what I do know. If the call's on them, the call's on them. But I'm certainly not going to be forcing it because I can't force it. I think that's one problem we might have in America. There are a lot of people in the pulpit called by mama, not by God. That's probably a problem we have. My mama said I was a good preacher. Well, pfft. mama may think you're good. But mama didn't frame you. There's one that framed you. I sense the Holy Spirit on this so strong. When I was made in secret and skillfully raw in the lowest parts of the earth, verse 16, your eyes saw my substance. Somebody says, I, I think a woman has a right to abortion. I don't because of these verses right here. Huh. Your eyes saw my substance. See, so try to tell them, somebody told my wife this recently. You know, I don't remember the, what do they call They're just embryos. They're just, they tried to reduce it, you know. They're not people. My wife wrote this lady and said, oh, you know what? That's what I started to tell you a while ago. I, I unfortunately had a baby prematurely. How many weeks along were you? Twelve, Twelve weeks. I, myself, pastor, and Aaron held that little baby boy right there. I couldn't tell he was a boy, but we, we just had a feeling. It was You could see ten toes. I'm talking, he, he took up this part of the digit on my finger. Whew. Don't you tell me there's none of God. Well, it's just a blob of tissue. It's just biology. You are a humanist and need to repent. The Lord's eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, hmm, they are all written, were written. The days fashioned for me. Look at that. The Lord knows you better than you know you. 
When as yet, there were none of them. You weren't even born yet, and God saw days on earth here for you. Isn't that amazing? What are you talking about, Pastor? This is foundational to you understanding where we're going in this. See, if you don't understand that God is involved in the creation of a human being, I might as well just stop with everything else I'm going to say. This is the very foundation of who we are, why we exist. The Lord formed us. He said, well, it's just mom and dad. No. God has a plan for your life. That's what this says. The day's fashioned for me. When I, yeah, I wasn't even born. I didn't even have one day. I hadn't discovered a, the land of America yet. Verse 17. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. Well, I like that. How great is the sum of them. Yeah. He actually goes on to say, and I'm, I'm going to have to stop here because I've got another assignment today. But if you could count the granules of sand on the seashore, his thoughts are more than that toward you. How dare you believe a lie that you don't matter? Don't you believe that lie for one other second? I don't know if someone's watching and, and dealing with this or what. I did not see me pausing on this part. I, this is, I'm going to move quick, but I'm not moving quick because you need to know this. God thinks about you and he knows you. Do you think about him? Do you walk with him? Does he get any portion of your day? He gave you everything. He set you up. He framed you, created your inward parts. He was there when no one else was there. He gave you meaning. He fashioned your days. What are you doing? Serving yourself and doing what you want. You got to follow him. You may not matter to some people, but you matter to the creator of heaven and earth. So you may not matter even when you get involved with church here. There may be somebody, and, and lots of times, especially when I have leaders, they have a lot on them. They're doing it for me, and you know what? They're doing it for the Lord, ultimately, with the Lord. But you got to catch this. Catch this. When they have a lot on their plate and there's a lot going on, they might accidentally pass you in the hallway and forget to say hi. Well, even if you feel like, well, I must not matter you do matter in spite of the way you feel. But even if someone then actually turns and does you dirty, you've got to have this foundation in your life. You say, wait a minute, I matter to the creator. Amen. See, I may be ugly to you. I had people tell me that in, in my life when I was young. You're ugly. You know what? I just let that fall on me. I found a woman that loves me, been with me 20 years. So I, your opinion, you can just move along. <laughs> That's the thing, you know. Well... You're not a good-looking guy. Well, I've got one to think that. That's all I needed. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I, look at you, Ray. You're about to run in here, aren't you? <laughs> Praise God. You know what? When you've been told that before, see, pretty people ain't got to worry about that one. What they have to worry about is their attitude. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, I grew up in a small, hick town, and I'm going to tell you this. Everybody knew who the prettiest girl was in town, and we all talked about it. And you know what? She wouldn't have nothing to do with any of us country boys. Not a thing. Wouldn't even, I mean, wouldn't even look at us. And that's all right. Thank God for that, because I needed to find the one for me, right? It ain't all about looks, but boy, I found a pretty one. Anyway, sorry, I don't want to get distracted. We'll be dismissing quick here. <laughs> what you need to know is even if you hadn't found anyone that loves you, listen to me clearly. If there's no one that you know that loves you, has told you you're good looking, it's okay. It's okay. The creator thinks about you. Yeah. Woo! That's good news. This is a key component.
to building a strong foundation in life. Because those that know this, those that are shouting and raising your hand, you may be sitting there being like, I wish I could shout and raise my hand about that. I just don't believe it. Let me tell you, you've got to get this as a foundation staple in your life. Because if you're going to do anything that the Lord's called you to do, you're going to have to know, I matter to him. I matter to him. He was with me. See, I, I used to host a Christian rap show on the radio. And there's a guy. I just brought this up. Ahead. There's a guy that says this. You were with me in the womb like amniotic fluid. And, and I don't know how a rapper pulls that out and says that. But, man, that penetrated my heart. So I was like, yeah. My wife heard it one day. She's like, that's a rap song? Wow. Okay, that's different, right? But what got me was I knew this scripture. And that's what I knew he was referring to. He was with me. Who else was there? You might not like the way I preach. That's okay. I'm not mad at you. It's all right. It doesn't hurt my feelings. It's okay. But I got to tell, tell you this. The Lord says you matter. And the Lord says I matter. So therefore, my aim is to please him in how I preach. And see, if I say, well, let's see. Let's see. Does this please you, Andy, with this message? And he's like, Pastor, this is a great message. This is wonderful. I come over here and I say, all right. Well, Steve, what do you think? He's like, no, you're too southern with all your slang talk today. I'm a northern. I don't like this. And he's like, hold on, Steve. I love this. I'm from the south. You see, now, that, folks, this is how church goes many times. Now, these things didn't actually happen. I'm just, I'm not pitting these guys. They love each other. They'll probably give each other a hug after church. He even waves right now, see? Praise God for that. But here's what I'm saying. Even if, and there's not, there's not. I'm just saying, even if there was beef here. Y'all get this? Even if Andy walks in with a chip on his shoulder against Steve because he's from the north. The northern Yankee. Better watch yourself, right? You can't come in with you. But even if that happened, Steve doesn't need to let that hold him back from praising God. Well, Andy over there, and he's even an usher. He's wearing that suit all the time. I'll just tell you what, he just don't even like me. He has a chip on his shoulder. This is what happens, see. And you lose sight of who is it that thinks about you all the time. <laughs> we were having a, a family discussion last night, and my wife said this, and I think it's really true, you know. People aren't thinking about you near as much as you think they are. <laughs> That's just true, you know. <laughs> Some people, they have beef. They, they actually let bitterness in their heart. They, they, they're all, they're mad at me. They're all, and it's like, man, we hadn't even thought about you in a while, bro. I mean, we got so much going on. I'm sorry. I'm not over here like, I got beef with that guy. I ain't got beef with nobody except the devil. We're in a war. There's an enemy loose. And he knows what I'm telling you today is the truth. He knows Psalm 139. Do you know it? That God is thinking about you, that he created you, designed you, fashioned your days, put a call of God on your life. People, I mean, come on. I was so shy. I was like, no one would ever want to hear me talk. I ain't got nothing to say. But here you are sitting here. Why? Because God's orchestrating this. That's why. That's why. Wow. It's amazing to me. Go to 1 Corinthians 3. I got lots to cover and no time to cover, really. We're pretty much out of time. But go to 1 Corinthians 3. We're going to look at this set of scriptures. And the good news is we can always gather back around the word Wednesday night. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Say one more time. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. He says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal. Uh-oh. As to babes in Christ. Look what he says in verse 2, 1 Corinthians 3. That's where I'm reading. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. Now, you know, milk is good if you're an infant. But once you grow whiskers on your cheek, it's time to get some solid food. <laughs> Might as well smile. He said, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. The reason I bring that up, the Holy Spirit is inspiring this talk and this writing. And he's talking to men and women like adults. <laughs> I mean, just think about that. So the Holy Spirit is saying, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. Well, what a dirty, dirty shame. It's a dirty shame to be an adult and you're still in the milk. He says, for until now... You were not able to receive it. 
And even now, <laughs> you are still not able. I know you're sitting here, what does this have to do with foundations? Let's keep reading. Verse 3. You're still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Folks, the church is notorious for the beef and the strife that goes on and the division inside the church. And I have worked hard and will continue to work hard to fight that in this church. But we're not automatically immune just because we love the Lord and want to follow the Lord. It's easy for strife to break out. So you got to have a real shepherd that has real authority that he's delegated to under shepherds under him that help keep you the pebbles out of your hooves. And some people, you know, it's like they come to church and they, they're the ones that they leave all their pebbles out. Uh, it was at my parents' house last night for a minute. And when I left, my kids have left a bunch of rocks right on the sidewalk. And I thought, well, that's how some church people do. you got to clear the path so you can walk down that clear path. Okay. Didn't like that example. It's okay. I didn't either. <laughs> Just know this where there's envy, where there's strife, where there's divisions among you. You're carnal. You're behaving like mere men. Go ahead and make this statement. Say, I'm not, I'm not a, mere human. a mere human. You're not. You're not. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yeah. This is foundational. I know. I've heard that before. You need to hear it again. You've got to have a strong foundation. Aren't you glad your foundation doesn't move? It's your home. Even though it was poured there and it's been there and it was there yesterday, it'll be there again. See, people, well, I've heard that before. You need to hear it again. You got to keep building on that. Look at verse 4. For when one person says, I am a Paul, another says, I am of a, 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 a Paulus, excuse me. I did that on purpose. It was kind of lame. Are you not carnal? You're carnal. That's interesting to me. Verse 5. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one? See, the Lord's the one that set the church up too. Not only to design your life, but he set up order in the church. And look what Paul says in verse 6. 1 Corinthians 3. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. You ought to just go ahead and circle that. I planted, Apollos watered, God gives the increase. One reason you keep coming back to church and keep coming back to church is that God, so that God will increase you. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. Our regional and international student conventions encourage and train our mighty warriors in competitions both academically and physically. With events in academics, athletics, exhibits, music, and platform, your student will be challenged and inspired to develop their God-given gift and talent. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at acceleratechristianschool.cc or you can call our office, 806-418-8913. You're going to receive a reward in heaven according to your labor on earth. That's why the opportunity to serve at church is probably the greatest opportunity you're ever going to have as long as you're alive on this side of heaven. People don't believe that, I know, by the way they, they skip. They don't think it's important to greet. They don't think it's important to sweep. They don't think it's important. Well, what if I took that mindset? And see, everybody automatically changes. Well, you're a pastor. That's different. Why is it different? It's just the position that God's anointed me for. He's anointed you for the position of what? Well, like Miss Sabrina on the keys. That's powerful. When she was playing this morning, man, the presence of God was on that. The singers, as they're singing, the presence of God was on them. And all the instrument players, right? Well, the Spirit of God's on the person sitting in nursery, rocking a baby. They're not just babysitting. Speaking the word over those little babies right now. And you know what? Enabling you to enjoy a feast from the word of God so that you can leave here changed. Amen. You're not distracted. See, I'm telling you right now, if we brought all of our kids in here, my wife wouldn't get one thing out of this. 
And probably me neither, because I'd be saying, they need to straighten up or I'm going to come down there. <laughs> then you wouldn't get anything. See the domino effect? But some people don't get it. They're like, well, why? Why would you want me to take my kid? Why would you make a second nursing mother's room? Well, that way you can take your baby and you can go in there and you can still hear the word and then it doesn't distract anybody. <gasps> You're against babies? No, I got seven of them. I, I get it. I understand. I love them. I get it. We're not mad at anybody. I'm just want when you come here, you've got to bind distractions and all the battles you're in out here and all the things the enemy tries to bring in to try to steal what God's wanting to bring. And I already tell you, the enemy tried to steal what the Lord's wanting to bring this morning. But he loses. He loses because there's different ways he does this. So the entire reason we have church and we have a setup like this is so that you can receive from God. We set it up so you can sit right there and you can hear the same thing you'll hear if you're in here with your baby and then no one else is distracted. Now see, somebody said, well, you're targeting people. I don't know. I'm not targeting anybody. I'm just explaining to you order. And by the way, if you want to learn this type of thing and be discipled, listen to me. You ought to go to SMTI. The Bible school will train you why all this matters and why we have an anointed person back here to watch your children. We didn't get the, you know, oh, look at this guy just came off the street. Go back there and watch our children. There's got to be some proving time. There's got to be a background check. We're not idiots, right? Wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Come on, somebody. This is the gospel. This is foundational. He who plants and who who waters are one. I, I, this is my point. The person back in the nursery and me, we're operating as one team. We're not on opposites. I don't got beef when I walk by the nursery. Oh, that, that person's in the nursery today. I'm thankful. Because they enable me to walk in my position more effectively. That's how I got off on all this. Right? Are you following this? I didn't hurt anybody's feelings, did I? I certainly wasn't trying to. I'm just showing you this is God's idea. The local church. It's God's idea. Okay. Each one will receive his own reward. According to his labor. So that means if you're a greeter and you show up, mint in your mouth, hair combed, excited, ladies have just a little at least dab of makeup, you know, a little smile on your face, you brushed your teeth, you got meat hanging on your teeth. <laughs> and you show up ready for you know to give your supply. Every soul that's ever touched through this ministry, whether it's by television, maybe it's by radio, way out in Bakersville, California, you'll never come across that person. But because you enabled me to flow in what God's called me to do here, and we worked as a team, God's able to touch someone all the way, 1,500 miles away. And the reward in heaven is going to be yours. God's going to reward you for your faithfulness like he's going to reward me for my faithfulness. That's God's system. Isn't that beautiful? That's foundational to understanding church. Now, in this series, I want to go off like a shotgun, as you can tell, but a lot of things I'm touching on are all foundational things. See, some people know, I, I don't believe in organized religion. I don't like the church. I've been burned and hurt in church. I know so have I. I've been burned and hurt in church. It's people, what? But you're pastor. You're talking about this church? Not necessarily this church, but yeah, this church. Ah, I've been told people, you know, pastor, I'd be willing to give my life for you. Man, you don't have to do that. I never asked you to do that. Wow. Those are big words. Give me a hug. Praise God. Love you. Less than a month later, Pastor, I need to come meet you. Okay. I'm turning all my stuff in. The Holy Spirit told me to leave. Well, where are you going? Home. And you think Pastor didn't get burned by that? Toasted. Like a cheap toaster that you bought that burned your toast up, right? Just phew, toasted, burned. Don't smell good, don't feel good. Well, what am I going to do? Ah, quit. I'm out of here. What if I did that? I'm going to stay on post. Not let people move me. People didn't call me. God called me. People didn't form me. God formed me. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost on that. Because why? If you'll get that as a foundation in your life, even when people toast you, you won't sit there all bitter. Instead, you'll be like, thank God he's not finished with me. Thank God he's the one that formed me. Thank God he's the one that thinks about me. Thank God. 
He's the one that's going to reward me. You got to understand your rewards are coming from him. Your promotion comes from him. Your prosperity comes from him. Your abundance comes from him. Your next breath comes from him. And I read all that to show you this. Verse 9, I like this. For we are God's fellow workers, and you're God's field. But look at this, look at this. Look, look, look. You are God's building. You're God's building. God doesn't build junk. If you're having a house built, you're going to want a good builder. Right? I would. Well, this is why you got to get this because God is your builder. He's building you and you're his building. You've got to get rid of carnality. You've got to get rid of strife. You've got to get rid of envy and divisions. That means even this afternoon, once we dismiss, if there's someone that you need to forgive, you forgive them. And that doesn't mean you walk up with this hypocritical, I forgive you for what you did to me. Because then that person's like, what did I even do? I mean, I, I get those reports all the time. Man, Pastor, so-and-so, they said, they're thinking about leaving. And I'm like, well, what happened? Like, I'm over here just perplexed. I didn't do one thing that I know. Anytime I ever see him, I'm like, how are you? Good to see you. Love you. Hug you. I'm like, I don't, what, what is going on? And every time, well, there's something you said, something you did. Kind of like that one when I said, you know, you sit here all sour. And, and I've had people that, well, he was looking at me when he said, that's why I keep looking at those cameras sometimes. <laughs> I'm not looking at you. I don't know you're mad at me. I don't know your struggle. I don't know all those details, okay? I just know what the Holy Spirit is saying. And he's working with all of us because he wants us to grow up. Yeah. And he wants to build something great out of our lives. Yeah. We're called God's building. Yeah. How dare you spit on God's building? Yeah. How dare you say, God, this is ugly? Maybe your life is ugly, but that's because you've been building on the wrong foundation. <laughs> These carnality, strife, envy, divisions are pollutions in your foundation. You got to get rid of it. You got to get rid of it. If you're going to build a strong marriage, you got to get strife out. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in to the Accelerate Church TV program. We're so glad that you could join us today. While this does conclude today's message, it does not conclude the message in its entirety. To hear this series, you can head over to our website at accelerate.church.cc and click on the sermons tab. Or if you're in the area, we would love to meet you in person and we're located at 4400 South Crockett. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. If we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church TV program.